This is an explanation of the early production process for making a 3D film from storyboard through animatic. We're focusing today on creating a performance animation along the lines of the 11 second club. We start by drawing a storyboard of at least 10 frames for 11 seconds. Uh, we're looking for at least four shots at about uh, one to three seconds per shot. Uh, four shots means three cuts at least. For most shots you want at least two frames per shot to show the action. I've timed out a 14 second presentation where there are the 11 seconds of the audio and three seconds afterward for a gag. So taking these 14 frames in this case we go to After Effects and we use the audio to create a timed out version of the storyboard. So I'm hitting each of the moments in the audio and I've got my shots numbered here to help keep track. And this is where the audio would end. And then the gag continues. Time. Are you not aware that I got farty and bloated with a foamy latte? My mistake, Shacklevim. Your mistake indeed. Now using this timed audio, we create a shot list. I have nine shots in this film. And the first thing I'll do, after numbering the shots and writing a short description, is recording the time from After Effects for each shot. So shot one starts at zero, zero, and goes until zero, 017. At zero, 018, we're in the next shot. So here in Microsoft Word, I have shot one going from zero to 17. And I continue that for each shot. The next one goes from 18 to one second and 11 frames, uh, the next one is 1 second and 12 frames to 4 seconds and 17 frames. And all of this is in 24 frames per second. That's the default frame rate in Maya. That's what I'm using here. So in After Effects, if we go to the composition settings, we can set these to 24 frames per second. So at 24 frames per second, 17 frames, we have from 1 to 17. We record the frames so that we can reproduce them in Maya. And then from 18 frames to 1 second and 11 frames is 18 to 35, because 1 second is 24 frames, plus 11 is 35. And we go all the way through until we have all of our shots timed. And then we go into Maya. With a timed storyboard and a shot list prepared, we're ready to start in 3D. If you have a scene and characters created, you would load them into a single file, but normally an animatic happens before any of the 3D modeling. So you would build the set as primitives or as very, very rough models, and the characters as simple colored cylinders to act as proxies for the characters. Now we'll create a new camera, create cameras camera, and we will set it up to reproduce the shot. First, we're going to make sure that we're looking through this camera. So go to Panels, Look Through Selected, and now the Ordinary Camera Tools will allow us to adjust the position of this camera. We're going to turn on Safe Frame, which is called Resolution Gate in Maya. We go to View, Camera Settings, Resolution Gate, and we can see what we'll actually render. Most films should be 1280 by 720. So we go to the render settings
and we choose our width of 1280 and our height of 720. And we can see our window opens correspondingly. And while we're here, we can set this to render as JPEGs. This is going to be our animatic. Name number dot extension, padding of three, and we can see in our shot list that we're going to have a total of 336 frames. So we can make the end time 336. Hit close, and also set the end of our film to 336. Looking back at our storyboard, shot one is looking at the very officious Jacobib, which here is represented in blue. So I adjust the camera to look at him. We do not yet see the body in his arms. And because he is officious and angry and powerful in his anger, we're going to look up at him, and we're going to keep him on the left side. Jacobib is always on the left. Tom is always on the right to keep the audience oriented. Now that we have the camera composing the shot according to our shot one in our storyboard, we select a camera by going to View, Select Camera, and we want, at frame 1, to record this position and orientation, the translate and the rotate values. So we select all the frames with our camera 1 selected. We right-click and choose Key Selected. And then we see this shot is going to go to frame 17. So we go to frame 17, and we key selected. And so now we have two keyframes, one at frame 1, one at frame 17, to record that first shot. To make a cut to the next shot, we simply go to the very next frame, frame 18, which as you can see here in the shot list, is the next shot, 18 to 35. And we get our next image, which is looking at Tom, with Tom all the way on the right. So we rotate and move the camera. And because Tom is in trouble, he's being scolded, we're going to look down at him. And because we have auto key mode toggle turned on, Making those changes automatically sets a keyframe. And so now the camera will cut from shot one to shot two. And this shot ends, shot two ends at frame 35. So we go to frame 35 and we key select it at frame 36. We're looking back at Jacobib, but this time we can see him in a wide enough shot that we could also see the parts of the body when he pulls. And this shot will end, goes from 36 to frame 113. Go to frame 113. Right click, key selected. And we would continue through all the shots. If one of the shots in the cameras gets a little bit wiggly, perhaps for example, if I hit this button to go back to the previous keyframe, this is frame 18, the beginning of the shot. Let's say I wanted to adjust this shot. I wanted to be a little bit more straight on as well as looking down. 
see more of his eyes. Now the camera is rotating, and if I want to keep this shot stable, I will right-click, copy that frame, go to frame 35, right-click, and paste. So now these two frames are identical, but in other circumstances, I might get a bit of a wiggle here. If I do get a wiggle, it's because the tangents are curved. So if I go to Window, Animation Editor, Graph Editor, and we'll show this even though I don't currently have a wiggle. Here are the frames on Camera 1. I can select all these frames and set the tangent to linear. So any wiggle that I do have would be eliminated. So we repeat this process for all the shots, and then we can take a little time to move the proxies, to animate them. I typically set keyframes for them at all of the camera frames, and then I make changes in the middle. So here is what it looks like with the whole thing animated. And then when I put them together in After Effects with the video set to Overlay or to Multiply as a blending mode over the original storyboard, we can see them together. Todd, are you not aware that I got farty and bloated with a foamy latte? My mistake, Shacklevin. Your mistake indeed. And that's the process of going from a storyboard to a 3D animatic. Next we would check the animatic to make sure we're happy with the timing and make adjustments while it is still easy to do so. And then we go into the actual animation of our rigged characters for good force, weight, and expression.